All right, welcome back, Hananiga. 7.6 factoring AX squared plus BX plus C. So this is kind of the top of the mountain. When you start talking about factoring, and the immediate thing is factoring a trinomial and then factoring a trinomial with a number in front or a lead coefficient. This is where a lot of people start to fall off. Like you understand this to a certain point. And so this is the one that you really need to pay attention to. And the trouble is also that there's a number of ways to do this. It's not like there's just one set way. And so we'll be talking, I will actually probably do all of the questions probably twice. So I'll show you two different ways. And obviously you can try which way you like the best. And again, it's not about which method you use, it's about getting it right. Let's do some warm up or some review. This is from section, uh, the previous section on factoring without a number in front. So we're looking just at the last number. And I want factors of negative 14 that will also, so one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative, that would get you negative 5. So I'm, we're talking about a positive 2 and a negative 7 would multiply to be negative 14 and add up to 5. And so then I drop that into the factors. And so the next step of that is to factor and solve. So I need two factors of positive 16. That would also add up to 10. Drop that in for the factors. And then because you're asked to solve, set the factors equal to 0 and solve. And now the last thing, remember factoring is the opposite of foiling. So I think this last question is basically to remind you this is what the factors would look like. And so writing this in standard form, you'll take 3x times x, 3x times negative 5, 2 times x, and 2 times negative 5. And then add like terms. So 3x squared minus 13x minus 10. All right. It says try factoring, but I'm not just going to, you know, have you randomly try it. If you want to hit pause, go ahead and see if you can try to factor, but you're going to try to come up with two parentheses that would actually make 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. So if you want to try it, go ahead and hit pause. Otherwise, I will do it in just a second. All right, here we go. The first one in each parenthesis always has to be able to get the first one here. So this, the first method we're going to do is called guess and check. So if you ever, if somebody says, well, have you tried guess and check, this is what guess and check would look like. So I need two numbers, and I'm going to use some colors here, that would get you 2x squared. So really, there's only kind of one way to get 2x squared, and that would be 2x times 1x. That's really the only way, if you're going to split the x's up into two factors, then you'd have to have 2x times 1x. So that's, we're guessing. Next is another guess, and I'm going to use a different color. We did the first one in the parentheses, so now we're going to do the last one in the parentheses. So I need two numbers that will multiply to be 3. So I'm going to guess again as 3 times 1. Here's where the check comes in. If after you guessed, you should always check your inner and the outer. If these two numbers are the inner and the outer, add up to the middle, you guessed correctly. And that is the correct answer. So guessing the first term, guessing the last term, and checking for the middle. This is the way, if you are somebody like myself who's doing math and, and been doing math for a long period of time, guess and check is the method that you would use when doing this. Again, if you're not good at the guess and check method, I will be showing you another method here re relatively soon. So here we go. I'm going to guess 3x squared. So 3x times 1x would be a good guess for 3x squared. Negative 10, and here's where, again, things start getting a little bit more complicated because there's a lot of ways to get negative 10. So I'm going to guess, again, positive 2 times negative 5. So I am guessing two things that will multiply to be negative 10. Now, I am a pretty good guesser, but 
check the inner multiplied together the outer multiplied together and if it adds up to the middle so the middle in this case is negative 15 negative 13 so positive 2x and negative 15x if it adds up to the middle you did it correctly and if it doesn't add up to the middle then you guessed incorrectly and you need to go back and so either change the the first or change the last or change the signs that also is an issue so if i would have had a minus two and a plus five my answer would have been wrong but i only needed to change the signs to make it right what multiplies to equal the first what multiplies to equal the last okay check does the outer and the inner equal the middle or the bx if no go back and try a new guess don't settle for wrong answers Okay, it has to foil. If you ended up foiling it out, it has to foil correctly. So I'm going to do, this is the guess and check method that we just talked about. So I need two things that'll, I'm guessing are two things that'll get, oh, this is the first example again, sorry. This is the exact example that we just went through. So I'm going to go ahead and skip this one because that's literally what we just did on the previous page. So here we go. Two things that will multiply to be 3x squared. I'm guessing now. 3x times x. And that's really the only way to get 3x squared. Next, two things that will multiply to be negative 8. Now, again, this is where things start getting a little confusing to people, ultimately because there's a, many, there's a few different ways to get negative 8. So I'm going to guess um, a negative 4 times a positive 2. Check. Negative 4x, positive 6x. If those two add up to the middle, you guessed and checked correctly. Now, I, I am going to show you another method right now, and maybe it's probably too soon to give you a second method, but I am going to show it to you just to show you that there are other ways of doing this. So I'm going to write the exact same problem here. It was 3x squared plus 2x minus 8, I believe. I will double check that. Yeah. All right. So I am going to show you another method here. Because there's a number in front, I actually can multiply the outside two numbers together. Now, two things that will multiply to be negative 24, but add up to 2. So I'm really trying to do it from the middle. So if I said, okay, two things that will multiply to be negative 24, but they add up to 2. So positive 6 times negative 4 adds up to 2x. So here's what you do then, and I'm going to do this as a grouping question. Write the first term. This is technically the middle term, so I'm going to basically, I'm dividing out the middle term and the last term. So this one and this one stay the same. This becomes the middle. And now we're going to do grouping. If you remember from the grouping, you can take a 3x out of both. You can take a negative 2 out of both. Oops. Try it again. Take a negative 4 out of both. Notice that the parentheses are the same. So I group what's in front and keep what's the same. So this is another method. Now this one takes a little longer, but it takes the whole guess out. Like I'm not guessing every anything. I am multiplying the outside two numbers together, establishing what multiplies to be that number and adds up to the middle, and then turning it into a grouping question. So it's a very cut and dry, straightforward method. So I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to do the next one by guess and check again. 12. So there's lots of different ways to get 12. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. So that, again, adds to the level of difficulty if I don't guess the right one. So I'm going to go 4x and 3x, and remember, I'm a pretty good guesser. Now, I need to find things that will be positive 4. So you're talking about 4 times 1. 2 times 2, but remember, I look in the middle and I see that I need a negative. So I'm going to try a negative 1 times a negative 4. 
So those are two things that will multiply to be 4 and help me get a negative in the middle. So let's check. And remember, I'm a pretty good guesser. The inner is negative 3x. The outer is negative 16x. And so when I check it, it adds up to the middle. Now, I do, I'm going to scroll down and go ahead and do this one by grouping just to show you again there is another method that could be done. So 12x squared minus 19x plus 4. So here's the guess and check method. Multiply the outside two numbers together. And now I need two things that will multiply to be 48 but add up to negative 19. And so this is what we did the other day, right? So negative 16, negative 3 would add up to the middle. Rewrite the question. And do grouping. I can take a 4x out of the first two. And I can take a negative 1 out of the next two. Because the parentheses are the same, I can group the GCF and keep what's the same. So again, I'm just showing you two different methods to show the exact same answer. Next, factor and solve. So this is taking it to one extra step. So now not only do I have a factoring situation that is challenging, but then I also then will solve it. And we've been doing the solving for a number of days. So hopefully that won't be an issue for most people. So here we go. Factors that will get you 2x squared. I'm going to guess 2x times x. Factors that would get you 3. You're talking about probably 1 times 3. Guessing and checking. Positive 1x, positive 6x does add up to the middle. How do you solve then? Once it's in factored form... Set the factors equal to zero and solve. So I'm just going to do this one by guess and check. But again, you could do this by factor by grouping, just like you did on the previous couple of examples. All right, we're going to guess and check again. And the more possibilities on our guess, the harder the question actually becomes. So I need two things that will multiply to be 4, but, so I, I could guess 2 and 2. So let's try um, 2 times 2. And I wrote a 4, I'm not sure why. 2x times 2x. Now I need two factors that will get me 15, but look at the middle that always got to help you a little bit with the signs. The only way to get a positive is a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. So we're talking about a negative times a negative. And check. So these two multiply to be negative 10x. These two multiply to be negative 6x. I got it right. With that being said, now they want me to solve it. So I set the parentheses equal to 0. And I solve. So I add 5 and divide by 2. Here I would add 3 and divide by 2. So I get two answers, one for each factor. So I get 5 halves and 3 halves. And if you wrote 2.5 and 1.5, I'm assuming your teachers would probably take that. This is a review question. It needs to, e or I should say, it needs to equal zero. So that adds one more degree of difficulty here. So I need to move that over. Guess and check. So I need two factors that would be 2x. I need two factors that would be 8. And so a negative 8. So what if I did a positive 1? Let me try that again. I guessed incorrectly. Again, I told you I was a good guesser. And there, I guessed correct, incorrectly. What if I did a negative 1 times a positive 8? Check. Negative 1x, positive 16x, adds up to the middle. Now, for the, that's the factor portion. Now, from what we did previously, so we did this a couple lessons ago, once you have it in factored form, and I'm running out of space here, so I will just add 1. 
and divide by 2. So set the factors equal to 0. I never want a negative x squared, ever. So if I need to set this equal to 0, I'm actually going to move the, I'm going to add 7x squared so that it actually goes the other way. So I'm going to add 40x. So again, I always want a positive x squared term when I go to do my guess and check. If you decide to try to do it with a negative lead coefficient, it does add an extra degree of difficulty. I can't say that it can't occur, but it does become a little more complicated. All right, factors of 7. 7x and 1x, that makes it pretty easy when that lead number is a prime number. Factors of 12, all right, so we got 1 times 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. So I got to try to, and it's a negative there, so I got to try to come up with a way that I can get to that number. So what it, would this be possible? Could I go a negative 2 times a positive 6? Would those two numbers multiply to be negative 12? If the answer is yes, keep going check check those two add up to the middle so i guessed correctly so again your guessing skills and your times table skills are really going to come into play in this particular section so 7x minus 2 set that equal to 0 x plus 6 set that equal to 0 so again when you go to solve it set the parentheses equal to 0 and solve and i know i didn't i've got to give myself a little more space here set the parentheses or set the factors equal to zero and solve you try go ahead hit the pause button see if you could try this one by yourself and i am going to do this one in in two different methods so hit the pause button and try All right, welcome back. I'm going to show this question in two different ways. So here we go. I need guess and check. Two things that will multiply to be 2x squared. Two things that will multiply to be 21. Check. Positive 3x, positive 14x. If it adds up the middle, it's the correct answer. So guess and check is always the fastest method. If you are really good at your times tables, if you are really good uh, at some mental math, then I highly recommend guess and check. If you are not, if you are somebody who needs a concrete method of how to factor, this is what you should do. Multiply the outside two numbers together, and then two things that will multiply to be 42, but add up to be 17. So a positive 14 times a positive... 3 multiplies to be 42 and adds up to 17. Then, rewrite as a grouping question. So this becomes the middle term, and this becomes a middle term. And no, it doesn't matter the order. You could have actually went 3x and 14x. So here we go. 2x is the GCF of the first two. 3 is the GCF of the second two. And be, then you group the GCFs and keep what's the same. So you'll notice that my grouping took longer, but it was a very concrete method. Like I didn't have to guess anything. All right, I multiplied the outside two numbers together. I found factors of 42 that would get you 17. I turned that into the middle term and did a grouping question. All right, so that is the end of day one. I'll scroll back to the beginning. You, this is one of the, again, the more challenging questions. Day one assignment is a worksheet. Please make sure you're practicing this. The only way to get good at factoring is to actually put some effort into it. And so this is not a lesson that you want to skip practicing. And this is a topic that will be, that will linger, meaning it's something we'll talk about later. Um, not only in Algebra 1, but in Geometry and in Algebra 2. So please make sure that you're practicing this, and good luck.